I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And today I'm really happy to introduce to you Cindy Willoughby. Cindy, thanks for, she's actually coming up from Las Vegas and or has come up from Las Vegas and appreciate you coming up and sharing You're your welcome. story. Thank you for having this me. This is so fascinating because you have such a rich, interesting background. You were actually born into a Christian family. Yes, I was. Yeah, where was that at? Um, I was born in Southern California oh, in okay. um, Whittier, California. Yeah. And that's where you went to school? That's everything. where I went to elementary school and yeah. grew up. And then when I was 12, we moved to the next city right over from Whittier, which was Hacienda Heights. Okay. And I went to junior high there in high school. Yeah, and all this time you were raised Christian. Yes, I was. And did you attend like, youth camps? And I went to um, camps when I was like 10 or 11, 12 years old. Yeah. I went to camps and um, I, I was involved in the church and did activities. Yeah. And, well, I guess we almost almost always get a perspective of, of a Mormon youth growing up, going to seminary and, and becoming priests and deacons and mm -hmm. going to young women's and all that stuff. So maybe give us just a second or two uh, perspective of what it's like being raised as a as a Christian. As a Christian, um, and we your parents were very active. Right? My parents were very active in the, yeah. in the, in the in a church in Nazarene, okay. which is a Protestant denomination, and um, my sister and I were both, you know, very active with youth group, and um, they have a pro um, Sunday school, and they have another program that's similar to primary and mm -hmm. LDS, and it's called children. children, they have it during um, worship service, it's called Children's Church, yeah. and we have like well, a activities and games and get-togethers okay. um, during the week, and um, they so make it very fun to them. Keep your life busy then, huh? E yes, yeah. <laughs> it, it did. So what did, um, what was, and you, it was more into your high school that you started it thinking there was maybe more or something? I don't know, I just was, um, I really don't know. I just started um, probably in college. Well, I guess it did start in high school. I started having some real doubts about the church. I, I went to church, but um, I just went because I had to go. I didn't really want to go. Um, I, I really didn't know God really yeah. very well. I didn't know the Bible that yeah. well, and they taught it every Sunday. Yeah. It was a very biblical church. <laughs> and um, and was that, and like you say, you didn't really want to go. You I mean, so you're probably a typical teenager. Yeah, I was, I was kind of rebellious. And during my high school years, I went to a Christian science church. Okay. My parents didn't like it, but they, they brought me to the Christian science church. And then I, I had to agree that I would go to their church, to the Nazarene church. So I did, and that's kind of, very different, yeah. uh, very different theology. Yeah. Um, and then when I was, um, after I graduated from high school, I, I went to um, a Christian college, Point Loma. It's yeah. in a Nazarene college down in San Diego. Okay. And, and what happened there? Well, I, I felt at that time I didn't know really what I believed. Yeah. So I started visiting some different churches and all different types of denominations. And um, during that time, I got the phone book out because I thought I really should 
really be into a church that I agree with and and know what I believe. And there were a lot of people in that college that were pushing me. I felt like they were kind of pushing the theology on me. Yeah. And there were certain things that I didn't agree with the theology of what the Nazarene church taught. Okay. And I got the phone book out and I saw all these different churches. And I thought to myself, hmm, uh, I came to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> and I thought, wow, well, this has his name in it. Why do not all the other churches have the name of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. So I called and I, it said visitor center and I didn't know what an LDS visitor center, I've never heard of a Mormon or LDS or anything, I didn't know a thing. So I got out and I thought, I'm just gonna start visiting different churches and I called the LDS visitors and I asked them if I could, if there would be any way that I could learn a little bit about their teaching because I was investigating different churches and he was really excited oh, on, the, on the phone. They usually don't get those phone calls. He, yes, actually, he dropped the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and but before I realized, I said, well, I, he wanted to send missionaries to me, but I was attending the college, so that was kind oh, of difficult. Okay, yeah. So what I did was um, I, they had someone pick me up for church, and I went to the church, and I really liked it. I thought, this is an in very interesting. Started taking the missionary lessons, and I had women lady missionaries, yeah. and I just fell in love with them. They were wonderful, wonderful yeah. lady missionaries. And uh, basically what I said to them on the first discussion was, I want to know what church is true. There's all these denominations, and they all agree differently. <laughs> now, I would think there's got to be one true church on, a, on this earth because that, and they just, do we have a story to tell you? So they went right into the Joseph Smith story. Sure. And I could really understand where he was coming from because I felt just like, like Joseph you Smith. you were searching. And... I was very searching yeah. for the truth. And um, so I just continued to take the missionary lessons. Yeah. And they exposed you to the Book of Mormon, I guess, early on. The or... Book of Mormon. Yeah. And I, I just, agreed with it all. I thought, well, if there's the Bible, why can't there be another scripture? Yeah. What limits God? It just all made sense. It made perfect sense, yeah. everything I that they taught me. And did you do a lot of studying much? Uh, um, now, this was probably before the internet and kind of stuff. Yes, so it was. You didn't look up Mormonism or anything. You just kind no. of listened to their story. I and, listened to their story, yeah. and I, I was very gullible. I just ate it up. Yeah. And I just, it just made sense to me, and I, they had a lot of activities at the yeah. Mormon, you know, for young single adults, and um, I read the Book of Mormon, and I felt that it was true. I really Prayed felt that it was it. the Word of God, yeah. and it was a lot with feelings, yeah. and my parents weren't too happy about that. I was going to ask you, what did your parents think about this? Oh, they, were terrible. It, they did not like it at all. In fact, they were they, very against it. They were sharing stuff with you. Is uh, that... Yes, they. My parents knew the theology, and they knew what Mormonism taught. Yeah. And I, being the rebellious daughter, wouldn't <laughs> listen to them. I just wouldn't listen. And do you remember anything they shared particularly that you said, you know what, that that's not true? Or I, probably I the Trinity. About... I didn't agree with the. Tr I didn't see that as a biblical. I always felt that. That it was God. God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ, that they were two separate personages, and um, that was a real hard thing. The Trinity, yeah. it still is in it some still ways, is in you know. Ways. But um, but uh, no, because basically I just wouldn't listen to my parents, and um, they yeah. didn't like me being trying to caution you, but you weren't listening, and so no, I wouldn't listen to a thing they said. Yeah. I got baptized and. You know, um, I hurt my parents a lot oh, <laughs> by doing, by going against <laughs> and not listening to them. But sometimes we have to learn things, yeah, you know, yeah, the hard way. Yeah. So after uh, this Christian college, then you transfer. Then I went to um, transfer to BYU. Yeah. And I loved it. I was there for um, four years at BYU. You graduated and, there. And, and I graduated from BYU. Ended up being a teacher and uh, uh, so on. Well, that's um, wonderful. Yeah. Did you uh, ever hear anything at BYU that questioned you or brought you back to Christian roots or anything? Did Not nothing really, really, no. I just, um, it sounds so Christian. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't until later I realized, you know, you use a t 
Christian terminology, but it means something <laughs> totally different. But that wasn't, you weren't catching that initially. I mean, you were, No, I didn't catch that well at BYU. Yeah. It was until later. Um, not really, no. I just went along and with And you ended up being active for 39 years or so. I was a so. member for 39 years. Yeah. So did you got married during this time? I um, got married later. Yeah. And it was much, much later after I graduated. Okay. And so... Um, but you did end up going through the temple. I went through the temple. How was mm -hmm. that experience for you? Kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> were you in the middle of activity, though? I yeah. mean, you were a faithful mem member when you went through I the temple. I was very faithful, and I, it, I didn't know what to expect because they don't tell you what's going right. to happen in the temple. And... Um, I just really didn't really understand it, but nobody raises their hand and say, I want out. You know, I just kind of went, you know, yeah. through it. And it was, they kept telling me that if I keep going back to the temple, I'll understand it. Well, that's but, what... but I never really understood all of that stuff. So. Well, now, was this before 1990 that you went through the temple? I'm um, trying to think when it was. It was before, I got married in 93, so it was in the 80s. Okay, so you saw the... The original, or the one before they changed it in 1990. Yes, I did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, I did. So uh, n nothing again really sparking your, back to your Christian roots or anything? No, I was going to hold on to the Mormon church. <laughs> yeah, and be, now what, you were married though to a, a Christian. Yes. And so how did that uh, kind of, you, you probably wanted to get married in the temple. Did you try to convert your husband, so to speak? I tried or? to convert my husband. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, <laughs> I tried to convert him, him for get, take the 20, lessons. over 20 years. He never took the lessons, no. Um, I tried to convert him, but it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, but he was very, uh, you know, I really appreciate my husband because he was very supportive with me in the church. Yeah. He went to the activities hmm. to the church, and we went to like a family home evening group that they had. And he was willing to the, do that. Huh? He, he did that. We had a lot of good, fun with the activities and the social part. Yeah. And he went to church with me once in a while. He's a great guy. I, but I, we were never united in, in the theology oh, like we are now. So you didn't really talk about it. So you really had a strong testimony of Joseph Smith and the Book yes. of Mormon. And, I had a very strong, I just knew he was a prophet and I knew yeah. the Book of Mormon was true. And I, I believed everything. So you know, what they as me. a Latter-day Saint, what did you think about Jesus then? Well, having coming from um, a Christian background, um, they they don't talk about Jesus very much. It's usually as later I started thinking about things. You mean as an LDS, oh, they don't talk about Jesus. They don't talk or? about Jesus very much. LDS, right? You know, they talk about Heavenly Father yeah. and God the Father. And um, but when I go to... Well, they talk about the Savior and the they Atonement They do talk to the somewhat. Savior and the a little bit. Yeah. But it seems like as I got older, I realized I started feeling um, in my heart that well, I'm not really getting anything out of church, and I'm feeling kind of empty. Really? Mm -hmm. I started feeling that way. and I don't think most Mormons actually recognize that feeling that there is I did. because we're so used to it we especially those of us that grow up in it mm -hmm. it's just normal to not talk about Jesus in the yes. way that a Christian talks about Jesus and so but you were experiencing a little like something yeah. about Jesus there was something that wasn't right something was missing yeah. because I start going to sacrament you know when I went to sacrament meeting it's about family history, it's about food storage, <laughs> it's about um, all these things that you can start doing, yeah. but I wasn't, it's all about what we were doing, and I didn't hear a lot about the atonement, I, a little bit, but not yeah. a whole lot, yeah. not a lot about Jesus, it was all these things that, you know, go to the temple, do your family history, do all these things, so I yeah. started feeling a little bit empty, but I was still holding the Mormon <laughs> rod. <laughs> yeah. And not much about the cross, right? Nothing about the <laughs> cross. No, nothing. Isn't that amazing. No, it is amazing. Yeah. Grace, did you, I so, don't know what your sense of grace was. I didn't understand grace at all. As a, Even as a child, I as a teenager. So. But, no. And then in Mormonism, it's really not about grace, is it? It's about... All we can do. It's, I felt like it's like all the things that you do. Yeah. You, know, you hear so much about doing yeah. things. Yeah. So that's where I started, um, 
and then and you were a relief society teacher and were you in the pre it, presidencies too and pianist and i was but i was um in at byu i was oh, a relief yeah? society teacher at byu yeah. okay ward and then i did a lot with primary okay and um visiting teaching now after school then you were active and, yes and and you raised your family as LDS? Well, it's or? just my husband and I. Oh, okay. So we don't have, we yeah, have, weren't able to have kids. So, okay. um, but, but you went to church all the time? Mm -hmm. Every yeah. Sunday. And he was supportive? And he was very supportive. Okay. Really, really great. All right. So now the big question, well, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? So I start getting into um, the advocacy, like the ordained women. I start reading things that have been on the website. And I start thinking, hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, why can't women ha have the priesthood? This is where it started with. Yeah. And I felt very strongly with ordained women. Okay. And I thought, why can't women have the priesthood? I don't understand this. And um, so I call my friend to talk about this. And j one issue. Yeah. Who left the church. You, did you know she left the church? Oh, yes, because oh, okay. she left the church like eight years ago. Okay. Eight to ten years ago. And... We ended up on the phone all night long. Just talking about yes. different things. Um, diff we, it started with our day one, but she said, Cindy, that's not really the mm. most important. And she started sharing with me things like Joseph Smith's polygamy and polyandry. Have you ever heard that before? Oh, yes, I you'd, have. You had heard about it? I've oh. heard about it before, but I shuffled it over my shoulder. And See, I, I didn't even hear about that. I did. Oh, amazing. And um, it was just like many, many things that she started telling me about. Book of Abraham, and she started, that really shocked her, and she gave me all these websites. Well, we spoke over three weeks, and we spoke all night long, and and I just was like, okay, I'm not going to look at this. I'm not going to look at this stuff, this anti-Mormon literature. I'm not going to look at it. She finally dared me. She said, why don't you? What do you have to lose? You know, like, she dared me to look at it. And I said, okay, I'll look at it. And I was said that because I'm going to prove her wrong. Yeah. Well, it backfired. <laughs> and I started looking at things, that, a list that she gave me, and yeah. she gave me your, she gave me ex-Mormon files. files, and she gave me your 17-minute. Okay. And I started listening to that well, on the phone, um, she, actually. She did it over the over phone? Over the phone, <laughs> yes, over the phone. We were both listening to that. And Sean McCraney. Yeah. And um, I can't remember. There were there was a list of people that she gave me to go to the website. Mm -hmm. And then one list, I just started researching everything and anything I could find. And I was shocked on a lot of stuff. You know, polygamy I knew about, yeah. polyandry, because she had spoken to me about it before. But I was just shocked. And I got into the book of Abraham. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know? And then I went into the um, Book of Mormon how there's and all the no archaeology and, yeah, and yes and all the changes yeah. and just one thing led because it started with church history then i started getting into the doctrines uh adam's road you know and reading things and then i oh man just oh. did you kind of get drawn back to the bible then yes because i started with church history and then going into the doctrinal yeah. issues which led to, to the bible comparisons. Yeah. yes and at that time i decided well Oh my, <laughs> what have I gotten into now? You know, I've, I've got to do something about this because this isn't, this isn't right. And During the same time, I wanted to tell you, I started, I went to the internet and I started looking at the different churches in this area that we had, to Las Vegas where we, where we had moved to. Yeah. And I put in a church there and the first thing that came up was Community Lutheran Church. Oh yeah. Um, and so I was watching their live services we have five services yeah. and then i was attending i would do that in the morning and i wasn't really listening to the pastor because i was getting ready for church but i was listening the to the LDS music church <laughs> yeah yeah yes i was getting ready for the mormon church and right. go to the mormon church in the afternoon while you're listening to the lutherans right well i'm listening to the lutheran uh, choir and something spoke to me through the choir through the music Really? Yes, it spoke to me. Well, you are me. a pianist, right? And Yes. Yeah. And it, the music really touched me. Oh. And during this time... Um, that about was About praising Jesus, was it? Oh, it's all about Jesus. Yeah. And the music was so uplifting. The choir 
and the choir, um, you, I could see something radiating upon the choir, uh, the choir director, Bruce. <laughs> And he just radiated. There was something about him different. And so as I was watching, and I went to, this happened, this was like for almost a year. Wow. And then I decided to, uh, I just, okay, so I'm going to make my decision here. What am I going to do? And um, I prayed about, yeah. you know, my decision after I had done all my research and I opened my Bible up, yeah. and it's, it came out to, in, the, in Matthew where it says, Beware of false prophets. Because <laughs> I said to the Lord, I believe the Bible, and I believe it's true, all of it. And Pray, it came right to God. that exact verse. The next week I did the same thing, and it fell to the next verse. <laughs> and uh, it, it went over three weeks when I got my Bible out for the third time. Beware of false prophets. Uh, beware yeah. of false prophets, for they shall come as... Wolves Sheep's or something. clothing, yeah. but inwardly yeah. they were raving, raging wolves. I should have believed God the first time, but I guess he had to show me three <laughs> times that this is a false prophet. That's, I don't feel that's a coincidence at all. It, it was, that came from heaven. <laughs> and so the last, I, so I, I watched uh, the Book of Mormon versus Joseph the Bible. Smith. Bi oh, the, the Bible versus the Bible. Yeah. Ver you know, the Book of Mormon, versus yeah. Bible versus the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And um, I was sitting there and I thought, oh, I had a newspaper and I just threw it down. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just crying. I knew it. It's the church is not true. And I just cried and cried. And oh, that was pretty, that was, pretty that was sad. it. And so um, I sent in my papers oh, uh, my to right away. Yeah. I didn't want anything to do with the Mormon church. Oh. As far as being a member, I knew it wasn't true, but it was so ideal. God already had a church for me all lined up. Yeah, because you had already been listening to, to it. That became my new church. And, and did you go then started attending that church? I started attending the church, and I've been there for, I think, about two and a half years. And um, this past October, I was just um, baptized Oh. Uh, into Christ at Community Lutheran Church in Las Vegas. That's fantastic. Oh, so I'm now. Now, did you go ahead? I'm now. I feel like now I'm a Christian, and now every Sunday it's all Bible. It's all. It's. It's all the, the pastor way. Mark. He's just wonderful, and he just makes it so alive. And a very sad part of this story is that your folks had passed away before this happened. Oh yes. And so you weren't seven able years to, ago. So you weren't able to share with them that that you had. No. Uh, but, but they but know. God and you told God. I told God, please, we let them know that I'm <laughs> at peace because my parents prayed for me. I know every single day to bring you back. They knew what it was all about. Yeah. And so I just know that. In heaven, and you, they know. Yeah, they and you, know. And you just had to go through this experience. Yes. So Jesus has taken on a little different perspective now. The last couple. Oh, of years. very much so. <laughs> it's totally different now. Yeah. Um, you know, I just I love the Bible, and I'm always reading the Bible. Yeah. And every day I read the Bible, I find, hmm, hmm. this isn't what Mormon Mormonism says. You know, I, I'm still finding things <laughs> that you know, comparing yeah, the know. doctrines aligned up. Mormonism is not biblical no, no at all it does not if you really get into the Bible and just read it for what it says yeah and 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 it's just amazing that freedom now of not ha it's just all about Jesus and what he did for us yes and his grace his grace and his righteousness and I don't not, have to go out and do. prove myself and work for my <laughs> salvation it's Jesus it it is done it is finished and that's such and a joyful, done. powerful message that it isn't about us. It's no, about Jesus. And, it's about Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And in Mormonism, like you say, we just don't really focus on that awesomeness of, of who Jesus is and what he did for us. No, we don't. It's just kind of minimized. It's really sad. Yeah. It's more like about, you're right, about what yeah. we do. But when Christianity is about what Jesus Christ did. Yeah. And that's the joyful message that and you feel a sense of freedom now do you the cross and grace and all those things yes that are i so, do yeah yes i'm really excited about it i just want 
tell everybody about <laughs> how much what Christ has done for me. It's unbelievable yeah. for our for our marriage. Yeah, I'm I'm doing the same thing you are, reading the Bible, and I'm always comparing or thinking back to the Mormon days, and and but they just dismiss it because it's. Uh, they just say, like the Eighth Article of Faith, that it's only trans, not translated correctly. They don't have any understanding of the manuscripts that are available to prove it, and the Dead Sea Scrolls, and and you ask and them, like, what stuff. part is not translated correctly? I ask that to every every Mormon. Not one Mormon Can has tell you told is. me yet <laughs> where it's mistranslated, but it's not translated. It's the Word of yeah. God, and it's true, yeah. and it's for us today. Yeah, and how precious the Holy Bible is. And you have had some family and friends that have, uh, or at least fr f friends that have kind of been unhappy about this transition in your life and yes. tried to pray for you back into the church, I guess. Very much so. Yes, yeah. I have several that have told me, you know, we'll pray that you come back and mm -hmm. maybe hopefully you'll come back someday. Well, believe it or not, no. we're almost out of time. Yeah. Yes, Do that goes wanna, fast. I know. Do you want to say anything to them or any other... Um, folks out there that might be questioning the church. Right. Well, um, I just say to my LDS friends that, you know, I just love them so much. I love the LDS people. We do. I do too. I do. I love them. And just, just read the Bible. You don't need anything else. The Bible is sufficient. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. And just read it for what it says without your own interpretations. Yeah. Read Galatians and Romans. Yeah. You'll learn, that's what I'm studying right now, and it, you really learn a lot from Romans and Galatians. Yeah. And um, just, you know, the Bible, the Bible is, is it in Jesus Christ. He paid it all. It is finished. Have you noticed a difference in your prayers too? Um, have you always been a, maybe you, with yes. your Christian background you had a, but your prayers? I, I just wondered if you had. I don't know if they they changed I, a, a whole lot, but um, probably more so now that is Thy will be done. Oh, Instead more trusting what, in God. More trusting in God. Yeah. Oh, good. So that would be like a big, a big difference yeah. for me, oh, good. and show me how to be a, a a witness. And more, more willingness to just rely on what God, what God has, has in has, has in, in store, store for me, it. and what yeah. He's put in my place. Well, Cindy, so. you're just a delight and oh, a, a sweet lady, and I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you for having the courage to uh, kind of investigate. That's one of the problems I think. It a is. lot of Mormons are just not really willing to step back and maybe take a broader look at things and yeah i say look get another viewpoint and just we're almost done open <laughs> okay open th th thank yeah. you for having me thanks for thanks for joining us see ya